Okay, I might say this book is garbage if the book is garbage. Hey guys, it's Michaela back again with another video. Yes, I am wearing the same clothes as I was wearing in my last haul video um, because I am recording it directly after. Sure, yeah, I could have changed shirts, um, but I didn't. Deal with it. Real quick up top, sorry if you can hear my laptop. Um, it's really working overtime at the moment. I don't know why because it's not doing anything because I don't have internet connection so I can't work I can't do anything so not sure why it's stressing so much um, but it is making quite a lot of noise so sorry if you can hear that confession time here's what I got I don't watch a lot of booktube that might be like a sacrilegious thing for someone who makes booktube videos to say but I really don't in fact I only watched booktube for about a month or so before <laughs> deciding I was gonna make this channel um, it was very much an impulse decision as are like all of my decisions. I was never really like into booktube spaces. Um, that's just not where I got a lot of my like book content. I only even started watching some booktube videos because they got recommended to me on my uh, like my YouTube recommended section. And to be honest the only two booktubers I've ever watched with any kind of regularity are Paperback Dreams and Caleb Johnson. I'm gonna be so mad at myself if I got his name wrong. <laughs> but I don't watch YouTube religiously. I am not subscribed to any booktube channels. I am a community dabbler. <laughs> um, I think it's because I'm an only child and I can't commit to anything. But like, you know, I love watching gaming on YouTube. Like I love, I've always loved watching people play video games, but I think I'm only subscribed to like two gaming channels. And sort of the same thing with other types of like YouTube sub communities. I'm not really involved in any of them. I just sort of like skate along the surface of a bunch of them. Sorry if that's like upsetting or, or, or weird that I make booktube videos but I don't really interact with the booktube larger space. It's not that I don't like it or that I don't feel welcome or anything like that. It's just like that I'm very like kind of set in my ways <laughs> um, when it comes to like what I watch on YouTube. So in order for me to like commit to a channel, I feel like commit to a channel and I'm just not ready to commit to a new channel yet, much less an entire community. I am telling you this um, because I only found out like last week that there is apparently a booktuber newbie tag because like I said, I don't watch booktube so I didn't know that this is a thing other people were doing. So I will link down below the booktube newbie tag that I saw, the only one I watched. This was also in my YouTube recommended, which is why, which is like how I found it. Um, it's from a booktube person named uh, Fictional Fates, who is apparently very famous in book spaces. But like I said, I am not involved in communities. <laughs> I'm such a bad person. Like I'm such an antisocial person. I'm just like, oh, there's a whole community. Like I'm the worst. But so I'll link that video down below. Um, but I just took the questions and I'm going to be answering them. There's 10 and yeah, I'm just gonna get started. The first question is, why did you start this channel? I started this channel for sort of two reasons. The first is that I love talking about books. I think if you're going to start a booktube channel, if you didn't like talking about books, that would be a little weird. Was sort of for a while now been searching for the outlet to talk about them. Last year, 2019, um, was the first year I set myself like a number goal for the number of books I wanted to read. I wanted to read 100 new books and I did. Um, and I decided that I was going to write a Goodreads review for all of those new books that I read. Um, and that was really fun at first because I love writing. Um, but at about 50 mark, about halfway, I was really done with that practice. I did not want to do it anymore. I was really resenting it. So I was like, okay, maybe doing something for every book is too too much. And right about that time was when I started seeing some booktube videos. I'm like, well, maybe this is the thing I'll do. Like, I want to keep talking about books. I want to keep promoting the books that I love, um, particularly because thanks to my continued involvement with Y'all Fest, the uh, book convention literary festival thing um, in Charleston, South Carolina that I go to every year presuming that there is one this year. I have a lot of arcs and a lot of sort of like books that haven't come out yet that I love to read and then like promote to people being like hey like please write this not everybody gets a chance to like read books before they come out or even read books that are new because new books are expensive because they're typically hardcover so if I have the chance to like help people make that decision to be like you know I read both of these books and I think this one is very much worth your time and this one's only like kind of worth your time so you have to make that choice you know just like helping people make that decision because I'm a person who like agonizes over every single purchase that I make like I just can't commit to making any purchase. I hate spending money so much. And it's not just about money. Um, I think we have a very limited time. I know that I'm a very fast reader, but some people like take a long time to read a book. So if they're going to like 
read a book they want it to be worth their time but what i might take a day or two to read they might take a full month which is totally fine like read at your own pace but like that's a time commitment that isn't as serious for me so if they're going to spend a month reading a book like they want it to be a book worth reading so i want to help people sort of like make that commitment if that's a commitment that they want to make even if they're not purchasing it even if it's they're borrowing it from a friend or borrowing it from a library whatever books are both a time and a money commitment so i want to help people make that decision and i like talking about books Question number two, what are some fun and unique things that I can bring to booktube? So again, like I said, I don't watch a lot of booktube, so I can't really compare myself to anybody else because I don't know what anybody else is doing. But you know, I'm a queer person. I know I am not the only queer booktuber by far, so I'm not like making that claim. But that is a perspective that I bring to the table. I'm a queer woman, so I think anytime a queer and or trans person gives their experience relating to a text that's valuable information for other queer and or trans people. You know, I have just always been a very opinionated person. I'm a very loudly opinionated person. You know, if I like something, I will scream at you about why I love it. And if I hate something, I will scream at you about why I hate it. You know, that is just always who I've been. I have no poker face. Like if I hate something, like you're gonna fucking know it. Like I can't hide how I feel. That being said, I also know how much work and time and effort and energy and just mind numbing pain that goes into bringing a book into the world not only for the author but for the editor and the publisher and everybody who has to collaborate to bring this thing into the world so I like to think that I'm very fair about my judgments you know I'm never just going to say this book is garbage okay I might say this book is garbage if the book is garbage I will never just be like I hated this right I'm always going to let you know why I think something didn't work or why I think something did work right um sometimes it can be difficult if is when you love something to like really articulate why you love it but I'm going to try my very best to always explain myself and explain my thoughts and explain where I'm coming from so I'm always going to try my best to really get into why I think the things I think about a particular book or a particular author or a particular series whatever because that matters you know the the why matters just as much as the actual opinion itself I don't know if that's necessarily a unique thing like I'm sure I'm not the only person in doing that on book two I'm not saying that like I'm revolutionizing book two but um that's just how I'm at least approaching this. Question number three, what are you most excited about for this new channel? For me, when I started this, and I should have said up top, and I think I didn't, this is just something you're supposed to do at the very beginning of your booktube channel, and I am now like six and a half months in, so <laughs> sorry. But when I was originally starting this channel, what I was most excited for was the creative opportunity. I used to make YouTube videos a very long time ago. They were very, very bad. We don't need to talk about them. But I really liked the opportunity that that presented me of like creating something, you know, trying out different things, trying out music and, and editing and lighting and all this stuff that I can like, you know, mash up together and like present to the world. Um, and that's something I really enjoy about this is um, I am very excited just in like, I said, the six and a half months I've been doing this to see like how my editing techniques have improved and like decisions I've made that like I'm like that didn't work and you know or maybe it worked in this video but it didn't work in this other one you know just like this opportunity to grow and to like flex this new creative muscle I am fully aware that the chances of this channel like gaining a significant audience are very small like I know the realities of like the YouTube algorithm you know I have no goals for making this a career I have no illusions that this is going to be a source of money for me like I know that the chances of that are very small um so this is really just a creative outlet for me if no one watches these videos then no one watches these videos and that's that's fine I'm making this for me and I'm enjoying the process Question number four is why do I love reading? And that is an incredibly difficult question to answer because to me it's kind of like, why do you love TV? Why do you love talking to your friends? To me, reading is just part of the human experience. And I understand it's not part of everyone's human experience, but it's part of my human experience. It's just something that I do. It is something that I've always done. It is a way that I can relate to the world, relate to other people. You know, sometimes if you're trying to understand someone else, someone else's experience, someone else's story, someone else's life, it can be hard to really get it when they're actually saying it to you. Um, that is a sort of paradox of humanity that when people are literally telling you to your face like, hey, here's what life is like to me, we just like kind of want to shut that down. And I just think it's so much easier to really process and sit with what other people are saying when it comes in the form of like a 300, 400 page book versus when it comes in like a series of tweets or in an essay or when someone's talking directly to your face. Your reading is, it is both an escape from my own life as well as an invitation to really consider someone else's 
lived experience and to consider someone else's perspective. It's also just like fun. Like I don't know what makes it fun. Like I just love storytelling. I've always loved stories. You know, fiction is always going to be <laughs> so much better than reality to me. And that's why I also love TV and movies and like video games. Like I just love all forms of storytelling. Um, reading is just the one that I have been with the longest. It's the one that I has been a part of me for the longest. And it's just something that I love to do. Number five, what book series got you into reading? This is very difficult for me to answer because I have been reading for so long. I remember when I was little having this series of Winnie the Pooh books that when you put them all in order, the spot there's like a picture on the spines of like this outline of like all of the Winnie the Pooh characters like holding hands like walking into like a sunset or whatever it was very cute I didn't read those books very much myself those are definitely like my the books that my parents read to me at bedtime um but that's the thing like my parents were reading to me like from minute one like I'm pretty sure the first words they said to me as an infant were probably like written words like reading has always been part of my life so like I can't really remember like I remember loving like being high key obsessed with the Magic Treehouse series by Mary Pope Osborne. I had like, I can't even tell you. I remember loving the Nancy Drew series. And then of course, Harry Potter. Harry Potter was formative for I think a lot of people my age, but I don't, I couldn't tell you which one came first. They're all just like in there. I remember, I believe I was like five or six when I started reading Harry Potter. I, I believe Nancy Drew came a little bit later, but I don't necessarily remember when I started reading um, the Magic Treehouse series. It was probably right around the same time. God, there's so many. Like, oh my god, The Secrets of June. Y'all remember The Secrets of June? That series slapped. Whatever happened to that series? There's so many books that I loved as a kid. I So many series that I loved that, yeah, I can't, can't really say that anyone in particular got me into reading because I was into reading literally from the jump. Question number six is what questions would you ask your favorite booktubers? And this goes back to my point at the beginning of I don't watch a ton of booktubers. Like I said at the top, the two booktubers I've watched the most are Paperback Dreams and Caleb Johnson. So I guess the question I would ask you guys both of them is like, where do you get your energy? I feel like both of them, they have like this great energy about them where they like seem both high energy while being like chill at the same time. And I don't really know how they manage that. I feel like I'm either, like I either operate at like a vibrating frequency or I'm like essentially a corpse. I'm like one of the two. And I, they have this like occupy this really great middle space where I'm like, you guys seem so alive and vivacious and full of life, but at the same time, like totally laid back and chill and I want to be that. <laughs> I don't know how you manage it. So I guess that's what I'd ask. And also how you also so cute. I can't read my handwriting, so I'm reading right off the page for this one. Number seven, what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? For me personally, I had to really just work on from the jump getting over the standard metrics of success, view count and hours watched and subscriber count. Um, because like I said, I am not approaching this channel with any kind of built-in audience with any kind of following like I just popped up out of nowhere I also um have neither really the time nor the inclination for like cross promotion I don't post the fact that I'm making these videos to Twitter I don't even have a Facebook like I'm not putting sort of the the effort that you're supposed to put into a channel to make it very successful to make it go viral because I just I don't want to you know I want to make these videos and you know that's the thing I'm interested in I'm interested in the conversation and I'm interested in the creative aspect of like making the video but I'm not interested in being like a professional youtuber so because of that I know that a consequence of that is that like these videos aren't going to get a very big reach they're not going to have a lot of views um the chances of this channel ever being monetized are like slim to none and I have to I had to like really recognize that from the beginning and remind myself that the priority was the content and the priority was what I'm getting out of this, you know, making sure that the content I'm putting out is something that like both fulfills me and is something I can be proud of. Like, listen, I go back and watch videos that I made literally just like four or five months ago and I'm like, holy shit, these are bad. But like, I'm, I'm still proud that I did it. Like, I'm still like, I still think that at the moment I made that video, that was the best I could do. And that's where I'm coming from this, you know, it is, you know, recognizing that like, you know, the world of YouTube wants you to be successful. And I had to define what successful is for myself and successful is making a video that I want to make that doesn't drain me and that you know is a product that I can at least say like yeah I made that shit. Question number eight is when did you start reading and like I said like a couple questions ago literally forever like I can't re recall a time in my memory when I wasn't a reader like when that wasn't not just a thing that I did but like a part of my personality a part of my identity. I have had books for as long as I can remember. I remember when I was like losing teeth as a baby not just like me as an adult it's like chopping my teeth out but when I, when I started losing my baby teeth and I would put teeth under the pillow more often than not the thing that I got from the tooth fairy was a book. Sometimes it would be in the next book in the series I was reading or sometimes just like a book that my parents found and were like she'll probably like this but I've been reading for 
more literally ever. <laughs> my mom told me once um, when I was older, I think I was in like high school, she told me that um, when I was little, she decided she was going to read every book I read. She would try to read it before I read it, but if she couldn't read it before I read it, she would at least try to like be reading along with me to just like see what I was up to, like see what kind of stories I was into. And she said that she had to give up like fairly quickly because she just couldn't keep up with my reading because like this is just who I've been straight out the gate. Question number nine is where do you read? And like the short answer is I'll read anywhere. I'm very good at tuning out outside noise. In fact, I kind of read better when there's like sort of background noise, babble or traffic or bird nature sounds, whatever. I read better if it's not total silence. So I can read literally everywhere. I have read outside, I have read on buses, I have read in classrooms at my desk at work. I remember once when I was in the fourth grade, I think I may have told this story before and I'm so sorry if I have. Um, once I was in the fourth grade, um, we had like a game day where you could like bring in a board game and like you could, we'd basically spend all day playing games and I had just moved to town. So like I didn't have any friends, I didn't know anybody. So I just brought one of my Harry Potter books and um, I was just like in the back of the classroom reading this book and my teacher comes over and she's like, how do you read with all this noise? And I'm like, what noise? Cause I just, immediately tune it out. I have definitely told this story before. Oh my god. I'm so old. So the short answer is I can read anywhere. That was the short answer. The long answer is um, I have a couple of places. So like um, this couch or love seat, whatever right next to me is where I read when I really want to like rake in that natural light that I've got right behind this camera. So I read here. I read on my bed a lot. I am excited for when the weather isn't the hellscape that it is right now so november hopefully but i'm excited to get some nice patio furniture and to be able to read outside when um the skin won't literally melt off of my body because i really do like reading outside back when going to the office was a thing that we were able to do i work in a football stadium believe it or not so i'd walk around the football stadium at lunch and just read while i was walking um and then sit outside after the walk was over to, to finish out the lunch hour but yeah i really like reading outside i also like weirdly kind of move around a lot let's say like i'm gonna sit down like i read for like three hours i will not spend that three hours all in one place it's very rare that i do i will like get up and move every like 45 seconds just like move from the bed to the couch to the floor like i'll just like move there's no particular reason for it i'm just like i don't want to be here anymore so when i say i read anywhere i will literally read everywhere sometimes at the same time. And the last question, question 10, is what kind of books do you, you, I, like to read? And again, the short answer is everything. I've never been good at having favorites of anything. The genre I tend to read the most is YA, but that's also because like the people in my life who are also book people tend to also read YA, so I like to read what they're reading so we can have conversations about it. But I will read anything. I will read poetry, I will read classics, I will read adult fiction, I will read middle grade fiction. Like I will read anything, any genre, thriller, romance, you know fantasy sci-fi historical like whatever i will read it um because i think reading widely is the best thing you can do for yourself like reading just like a broad array of shit is just like the best thing you can do to expand your own like consciousness that found, sounded very like whatever but uh, yeah like i really think that the best way we can relate to each other is to like have the most sort of background that we can come from so that you know the more books you read the more stories you hear the more characters you have sort of in your arsenal the next time you meet someone whose experience is like totally outside your realm of understanding the more you have to draw on to like get that common ground with that person and i think that's really important but yeah like i said uh why why is definitely the age group i read the most and i guess in terms of like genre i read the most you know probably like a year or so ago i would have definitely said sci-fi fantasy i don't know now i don't know if there's actually a, a genre that I read the most. I also, um, I need to get back into it. I love graphic novels. In the haul video that I talked about at the beginning of this video, I talked about the two Check Please um, graphic novels that I got, um, which I'm very excited about. I love graphic novels, um, and I really want to get back into reading those more because I think they are just fantastic. So that is the end of this booktube newbie tag. Sorry that it's like six and a half months late. Please, in the comments below, like, link me your favorite booktubers or just like booktubers you think I should check out because I understand that I do need to like actually be part of a community I can't just like exist out here on my own but thank you so much for watching I'd love to hear your answers in the comments if uh to any of these questions if you know you have your own thoughts or, or answers um I'd love to hear them and yeah I will see you guys in the next one okay bye